In today's episode, we're going to explore the transformative journey of cultivating a positive mindset. Discover how self-awareness, gratitude, mindfulness, and the company you keep can all contribute to a brighter, more optimistic outlook. Join me today for the actionable steps to unlock the power of positivity in your life. Let's go get that nugget. Welcome, ladies, to the Life Mastery for Women podcast. I'm Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind, your host. This is where we go to learn to master our life one nugget at a time. Hey ladies, it's Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind. Welcome to today's episode where I hope I am finding you setting yourself up for a positive mindset. If you don't have a positive mindset, then it is my intention that in today's episode, I give you just one nugget of inspiration towards your transformation. So today I'm going to give you five steps, five powerful steps to help you to start cultivating a positive atmosphere, a life from the inside, some positivity that that emanates from within you. Not just saying positive things and not just, you know, pretending or fake it till you make it. It is literally about changing how you feel on the inside so your outside starts changing. You know, when I was when I was in probably my early 20s, you know, I started out really positive kid and really excited and then somehow through school and age and puberty and you know, stupid boyfriends and stupid teachers and whatever through school, I started to kind of change my outlook in life. By the time I got to college, I think that I was really looking forward to my freedom, but man, did I have a bad attitude. I was 17 years old when I started college and, and just because I have a fall birthday, not because I graduated early, but I started early and, and it was this great big like a great big experience that was positive and exciting and fun and free. But then I just didn't have a lot of confidence in myself to create kind of this success story that I really wanted my life to be. I really thought that the external world was going to shift in my favor. And then just kind of one thing after another and one circumstance and one situation and one problem just kept leading me to kind of have this negative outlook. But I didn't realize that that negativity that was inside was what was creating these big problems and outcomes that I was getting or lack of getting. You know, I was, I wanted to be an RA, which is a residential assistant that, you know, lives, you know, on the floor and kind of in charge and you plan activities to help your, you know, in the dorms, in the college and you plan your activities. And I really thought that I'd be really good at it. And I remember going head to head with one of my guy friends and he ended up getting it and I didn't. And I remember asking him afterwards and he's just like, basically it's because you're too immature. Now, of course, I didn't really like him saying that, but I don't think that that's what it was. I really think that I had this skepticism that anything good was going to happen in my life. And with that kind of an attitude, that is what I was manifesting. That is what I was creating because the inside of you is the reflection that shows up outside of you. And I find that to be the first piece of inner work because it makes you go inward. If you really truly understand and can grasp the idea of that, that the inside of you, all of the stuff, all of the beliefs, the behaviors, the thoughts, the emotional state reflects out into the world around you. And so when you realize that and you really start to focus there, you will never try again try to solve a problem outside of you. You will spend your forever. You will sometimes will spend your whole entire life trying to solve the problem outside of you and you're like it's not there. And eventually you're going to go, what do I need to do? Who do I need to become? Who what do I need to change about myself? And that's what I want to talk about today. So step one in creating that positive mindset is, or cultivating uh, the positive mindset, the first one is self-awareness, is giving yourself um, a good overhaul, looking at how you think about things, how you think about yourself, how you think about your environment, what you think about other people, what you think about the world. Taking some time and going inward and asking yourself the question, what do I think about this? What do I think about myself? Like, what are my beliefs about my abilities or my skills or my life in general or where I'm going with my life? Asking all of those deep, meaningful questions to uncover who you really are. Because who you really are is actually this beautiful being that is very powerful. But we keep covering it up with these shitty beliefs that just don't 
that don't work, that don't align with that. And we go, well, Jen, no, I, you know, I'm not a powerful being like, or, you know, I have to change the outside of me. Like if my kids could just behave, if my husband would stop doing this or start doing that, if my boss would just give me a raise and all of that is BS, all of it is. So when you first start, this is the this is the step one in the waking up process is the self-awareness, the introspection is going inward and uncovering for yourself, who am I? How am I acting? How am I behaving? What am I thinking about all of these things? And once you can start to basically look at your, I want to say like your character sheet, what are all of the beliefs and the thoughts that make up the current version of you? So this is like in the video game where you're in, you're in like a live world and you create this avatar is now going into the settings and looking at the profile and looking at what are your beliefs, what are your behaviors, what are your actions, your thoughts, your emotional state to dissect and decipher this is how I'm acting and thinking and being and believing and, and behaving and it's creating this life over here. It's creating this outcome, this money, this relation, these relationships, this, this um, environment that I'm living in, these, this career, the, all of this. And if I can decipher those things that create the this, this 3D experience, then that means I can go into this avatar and into this character sheet and I can start to change things And when I start to change things, I start to release those limiting beliefs that no longer serve me. I start putting in empowering thoughts that create empowering emotional states, which then create a whole new outcome. That's where my work is. And that, my friend, is where we begin to shift our journey. Our our environment and our atmosphere begins to change. That's the power that I'm talking about. That is where the work becomes is, oh, wait, here's this thing. This is the belief, this negative outcome. What belief do I have about that? And as soon as I can figure out what belief I have about that, then I can let that belief go and put in a new belief. And now I've upgraded my avatar. Now, when we look at our life experience and you look at all of those areas, your health, your wealth, your career, your relationships, your spiritual connection, your environment, you look at all of that and you go, all right, do I have negative thoughts about this? And the answer is probably yes. Most of all, we all do. You know, we, we all have some suspicions and some pessimism and, and some negative and, and, but there's a, but there's a way right there that you can look at it and go, yeah, that's a negative thought. And then you ask yourself, do I want to keep that? This is all the beginning process, but it's kind of fun because you're going to cultivate the newer version of you on the other side, on the flip side. That is the whole journey. And as Jim Carrey said, the, the, the reason, the, the, um, the meaning of life is self-love. It is falling in love with that version of you and combining the human version with the spiritual version in its best match to become the spiritual version of you that is meant to live out the life on this planet in the best way possible, overcoming those challenges and learning those lessons and having that expansion that is, that is going to be your human experience and it's going to be beautiful and bold and you're going to make mistakes and it's okay. That's what part, that's what life is. So that's the first step is self-awareness, going inward, asking yourself those questions. What do I believe about said thing. You look around in your environment. What do I believe about my environment? What do I believe about my my household, my money, my career, my relationships? And that self-awareness, just going in and uncovering, looking at the character sheet of you, and then looking at the things that you want to change and start changing it. The next is having a gratitude practice. Number two is having a gratitude practice is being grateful. Being grateful for some people is really hard. I think That having, especially for people that are in really dire situations, is what do I have to be grateful for? I'm like, well, do you have a job? And they're like, well, yeah, but it doesn't pay me enough. I said, you at least have a job. Do you have a place to live? Well, yeah, but my house is this and this and that and that. And I go, well, you have a place to live, though. And even the homeless person, are you alive on this planet with power inside to change your circumstance? Yes or no? Do you have a friend anywhere on this planet? right? There are things to be grateful for, even if you are in the most dire straits, because listen, everything can change. And when you work at the energy level, everything can change quickly, rapidly, quickly. All of a sudden you get a phone call. All of a sudden somebody reaches out to you. All of a sudden you find a $20 bill. All of a sudden a resume that you put in six months ago and they're calling you for a job. All of a sudden 
you see the person that is your soulmate at the grocery store. All of a sudden, you're able to get pregnant when for nine months you've not been able to. All of a sudden, you find the house of your dreams when you've been looking for two years. All of a sudden, your boss comes to you and says, we're ready to give you that promotion and a raise. Okay? That's how fast things can happen. And in getting in that space of having gratitude for the day, anything and everything in your day, because just like life has all these challenges, those challenges make you a better person. Think about when you were four. What challenges did you have as a four-year-old versus a 14-year-old versus a 40-year-old? You have become a better person since then. You have upgraded and updated and moved, moved to newer, greater heights. We just will always have those challenges because we are always seeking expansion. And in those times of seeking expansion, we must grow and change and shift. We must. We have to. So beginning to gratitude practices could be as simple as just in the morning, what am I grateful for? I had a good night's sleep or I slept comfortably or I slept warm or I love my blankets or my pillow or my partner or I love my bedroom. And if you don't love your bedroom or your house, change things about it. Declutter. I talked about this just in the in the last one about how to empower yourself with the 11 transformative practices. Changing your environment. Finding, getting rid of things that, that, don't, that don't bring you joy. Getting rid of those things and bringing in things that do bring you joy. So having that gratitude practice also helps to elevate you as an energetic being that puts you in a higher vibrational state. Do you ever notice that when you're, when you're having a really good day, that's like nothing could bother you and nothing can go wrong and somebody pulls out in front of you in traffic and you're like, meh, who cares? Or your kid comes home with a D minus in his math class and you just studied last night or he failed his spelling test or you found out that... Um, you're not going to get the, the promotion that you want. It's like it just doesn't seem to matter because you're just happy. Gratitude can help you get there. Gratitude can help to unkink the hose and bring in the things in your life that you're ready to experience. So elevating yourself, your vibrational frequency to a gratitude space is going to start shifting your life and really being eternally, like, honestly grateful not just thank you for the this and thank you for its beautiful weather and thank you for all that's BS. Like really look around you and go, you know what? I'm really thankful for this space. I'm really thankful for this cool microphone that I get to record. I love these headphones that I'm wearing that I really get to hear my own voice so I hear what you guys are hearing. And I love the platform that's so easy to record on. And I love the ambiance of my new office slash library. And I love that my dog down here is just right here at my hip, you know, leaning her, her chin on my leg and wanting to be pet, that she just loves me so much and I love her so much and I'm so grateful for them and being with me throughout the day. And it just fills me up inside of, with this really, really good positive feeling. So please consider a gratitude practice. Journaling is another way to do it, adding that practice or, or create, create a gratitude practice with your family. We're going to say the things that we're thankful for in our household at dinner or at breakfast, or we're going to go for a walk and we're going to talk about the things that we're grateful for or with your partner at the end of the day, you know, so you can add it in, bring other people in to support you. I love the idea of doing that. I love the idea of, of, of encouraging others in your family to be grateful to. The third one is positive self-talk. This was also one that I talked about in the how to empower yourself with 11 transformative practices is your self-talk is so, so important. So, so, so important. And I hear my clients say stuff like this all the time. Like, I'm just not good at this. And I say, make that in the past. I used to not be good at this, but I'm getting better and better. Those phrases start shifting your life. Right now, it starts happening in the thought process, which is just in the energy, which create the emotional state. The emotional state of saying positive words to yourself after you've shifted them from a negative mindset to a positive mindset starts to begin to shift you emotionally. You start feeling better. You start having more energy. You start feeling clarity and focus and getting ideas. You start feeling more confident and, and more balanced in your energy and a better mood, just overall better mood. And when you can do that, you're starting to communicate from that heart space where your emotions generate, you're starting to communicate with the universe what you want to experience. Hey, universe, I want to experience more things that make me feel amazing or confident or happy versus I'm a victim in my life. 
I want you, universe, to show me more ways and reasons I can be a victim. We don't want to do that. So we, we must, with, with the beginning, the first one, beginning that self-awareness and then encouraging gratitude to lift up my spirits and to make my emotional state feel better. And now thinking of what are my words I'm going to start saying? What are the words I'm going to start saying as I'm going through life? Like, it's okay. Like, that was one that we were having some problems in the house where things were going on with the washing machine, then things were going on with the dryer and the toilet. And I'm like, what in the flip is going on? And I remember getting really upset one day. And I'm like, you know, crap, you know, like, we're going to spend thousands of dollars getting these things fixed. I'm like, it's okay. I just stopped myself right there. I'm like, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's just money. We're going to get it fixed. Don't let the appliances in your household derail you from feeling good. It's okay. It's okay. And it was just just like that. That was it. And it shifted my energy immediately. These are all little tips and tricks that I use all the time to help me shift that. And I encourage you to try that. I encourage you to look at and pay attention. This is all the self-awareness and the introspection. Pay attention to how you talk to yourself. It is so, so important to start recognizing, ooh, like I just called myself stupid or lazy. You're not going to create a positive anything outcome. You're not going to create a positive outcome by being negative about yourself. Now, you might temporarily get some sort of a payoff for that. You know, you get attention or someone goes, no, you're not. You're the smartest person I know. And you get a little feedback. But it does not create the real joy as if you were to say, you know what? I am a smart, beautiful woman. And I am empowering others through my podcast and my coaching programs and I deserve to have the life that I intend, the, the life that I am really wanting, simply because I'm on this planet and I'm doing good on this planet. That is much better than saying, God, I'm just not smart enough to make this happen. So think about that, okay? The next one, number four, surrounding yourself with positivity. Surrounding yourself with positivity is, is really about looking at the people you hang out with. I've said this a couple of times in a previous podcast is, you know, we look at our vibrational state and let's say my vibrational state's a four and I'm trying to solve a problem that's a four on like a scale from one to 10 and four is a really low vibrational state. 10 is an amazing vibrational state and I'm a four and I have friends and associations and family that are also fours and I go to them and I'm like, okay, I have a problem that's at a four and I need to solve this problem. And they will try to help me and they will try to give me solutions at the same level. Well, I need to elevate myself to a higher level, a five or a six, to be able to find a solution. I can't do it from down here. So we will constantly elevate ourselves in, in, and uplift ourselves if we are hanging out with people who are uplifting and supportive and uh, inspirational. But I can't do that if I'm hanging out with a bunch of fours, if I'm a four. If you are ready to up level, then we must associate with people who are at higher levels than us. You know, in business, they always say, go get a mentor. Well, they really want you to go get a mentor, somebody who's already done it, but somebody who's already got different beliefs than what you have. And it's important to, to look at the company that you keep and choose your people wisely. Like, do I want to spend a lot of time with this person? And I hear people all the time, my clients all the time. Okay, listen, though, I want to change my life and I want to whatever, but you know, I'm going to end up, my friends are going to end up leaving. And I said, well, that, that might be the case, but what's it worth to you? Like you're suffering right now and you want things in your life to change, but what's it worth to you to change your life? And here's what's going to happen. Your friends may come with you or they may not. Now, do you let those friends go and maybe you just spend limited time with them or do you go back to where the level are the level is where your friends are? And that's that's a choice you have. You can do that. You can choose that. You can choose to stay with your friends because it's too painful to go, but I will tell you, it is worth it. Because what you do is you keep going inward and you keep going inward and you keep cultivating this positive mindset and positive self-talk. Those friends are going to start, you're, you're going to be less and less interested in hanging out with them. And it is like this natural progression of life. It doesn't, just like some of your high school friends that you think you're going to be friends with for 
forever and ever and ever and ever. And then you guys graduate from high school and they go to college over there and you go to college over there and then you meet somewhere, you know, five, five years later and you're like, wow, like we have like nothing in common and we are totally different people. And it's really not that big of a deal. Right. Because from from high school to college, you completely level up. Most people do not all. But, you know, there's such a huge developmental stage to go from uh, to go from high school to college. And there's a major growth spurt that happens there. But when you really focus on the people that you hang out with and it is about your spiritual growth and about your leveling up, you will choose those people that bring you joy instead of bringing you down, where they they are a level up and it feels good to be around them and you can share some of your ideas with your spiritual growth with them. And if you are having trouble finding a community, well, I have a couple of communities you can be a part of and I would be happy uh, to have you a part of any one of my communities, Chakras for Beginners on Facebook or Lady Rising on Facebook. And of course, I have, you know, paid programs where you can be a part of, you know, my coaching program and have real access, custom access to me. But I think it's really important to find that community of support. And now the very last one, and this is this is the one that's the most fun for me, is is engaging in those activities that bring you joy, simply because they bring you joy. That filling up your joy bucket is such a wonderful way to start shifting your your mental attitude. You know, when we, you know, when I was in school, I played basketball and I played softball and I played volleyball and I ran track. I did like everything and some were better than others. I really loved basketball, but I didn't seem to be the popular kid in um with my basketball team. Like I I was very awkward as a kid. My mom probably should have kept me home one more year. Um I think I just didn't understand my peers. And I think I was just not quite ready for first grade when she put me or kindergarten when she put me in kindergarten. And I think I always felt behind. And when I started playing sports, I loved it. I would go outside and we had a basketball, a small basketball court in our, in our, by our, in our, on our property. And I would go and play and I would learn how to dribble with both hands and I would, you know, shoot different ways and I would pretend that I'm like this basketball star. Well, then as I got older, I changed sports. Then I got, you know, really heavy into rock climbing and hockey, ice hockey. And I just loved those sports so much. And I just loved, I loved the engagement of it. And I never really played basketball anymore. And I just started to just kind of, transform myself and my beliefs. And I'm like, then I really loved hiking, backpacking and hiking and kayaking and and just kind of added more outdoor stuff. But I just started doing more and more activities that brought me joy. Rock climbing by far is one of my favorite things to do. And now as an entrepreneur, I'm like a workaholic. Like I am like sun up till, well, more, more than just sundown because the sun's already gone and it's, you know, hardly seven o'clock as I'm recording this. But and that happens in northern Michigan, right? But and I'm a workaholic now. You know, I live, eat, breathe my 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 business. And I need to when I start feeling a little bit wonky or I start feeling a little bit of depression, I you know, I look at my list and I'm like, okay, what do I need to do? You know, and what do I need to change? Because it's up to me to change my emotional state. And so I'm like, ooh, you know what I haven't done in a while? I haven't rock climbed. Let's go. You know, we haven't gone hiking and Amy and I just started, we just, pick, we just picked up pickleball and my coach friend, Kathy, she, um, she plays and just loves it. And I'm like, that's kind of like an old lady sport. <laughs> She's like, well, you are 51 now. And I'm just like, oh, that's right. You know, but anyway, we, we got a couple of sets and we got some paddles and it's been so much fun to play. Like it's stupid fun. That's why I keep saying, because it's just this ridiculously stupid game that I just find. And it's not stupid. It's not a stupid game. I don't mean that. I just mean that it is like stupid fun. I don't even know what to say or how, or how to, how to even, how to even say it. It is, we laugh. We laugh a ton. It's like, if you don't know what pickleball is, it's like slow moving tennis and it's on a way smaller court and it's just, it's a lot of fun. So that is my top five of a positive mindset step by step is cultivating a positive mindset step by step. First is self awareness is is going inward and starting to find out where are those blocks and beliefs that you have about yourself and your environment, your job, all of the areas of your life. Beginning a gratitude practice and having positive self talk and then surrounding yourself with positive people. And then the last one is doing things that bring you joy. I find when I talk to clients or people or you know uh, people in our group and they're like, oh my god, I'm just so depressed. And I said, what is the last time? 
you did something in your life that brought you joy. And they're like, oh God, 20 years ago. I'm like, well, what do you do now? Well, I go to work and I come home and I eat and I sit in front of the TV. I said, well, there's your problem. Do you exercise? Do you work out? Do you do you kayak? Do you hike? Do you uh, do you play pickleball? <laughs> do you do what do you do? Do you go to the beach? Do you go for a run? Whatever. And they're like, no, I don't do any of that. I you know I watch TV. I'm like, start moving your body. And I tell you, if you're if you're listening to this and you want just a little bit more, listen to um, how to empower yourself. My eleven transformative practices. It's like the the podcast literally before this one, and. I have to say, it's amazing. Those things I incorporate in my life all the time. And you guys, my life has completely shift, shifted from what it used to be. And I can't emphasize enough how important it is to go inward and start cultivating the energy within. So I hope that this found you well. I hope you got a nugget or two from today's podcast. And I would love for you, if you could, if you got something out of it, please share. Please share this podcast on your social media so other people can start to hear this message and maybe, just maybe, we can elevate the planet one person at a time. Wow, that may have felt like a lot of information in today's episode, but if you're looking for support and a deeper knowledge of what we talked about today, then let's connect. You can learn more about how I work and how you can work with me. Send me an email to the meditation room TC at gmail.com, subject line, let's talk. And in the meantime, you can join my online Facebook community, Lady Rising, and mention that you came in through the podcast. I look forward to supporting you and connecting with you there.